Hey everyone, as I had mentioned, I am commissioned again to work on a painting, a mural for a church. Now it's a very big mural. Um, this is at least 20 something feet high. Um, you can tell from the altar and the perspective and the tabernacle here. Um, now it is a bit different. It's similar, but also different to the church that I did before. Um, normally I record all my work time on work like this, but um, as you can see, I got kind of got started already. Um, I'm gonna make sure I have this color in my palette. I'm gonna make sure I squeeze and eye drop this little green color here that I'm using to sketch. Um, using to sketch. I'm gonna make sure I have a nice dark uh, thing here just in case I accidentally eye drop another color. I can eye drop that one. Um, I have a list up there about like just ideas of um, figures that I want to that I might want to add up there. I texted the priest and he said he'll think about it because he said he hasn't thought about it much. But I'm just thinking I'm listening to the Gospel of Matthew right now, an audio Bible, and um, I just got to the transfiguration part. So I thought, okay, Moses and Elijah might be good. The three archangels might be good. Mary and Joseph would be good, and then John the Baptist, who is a great saint, uh, might be good. So this is just some some of the higher level stuff who might be very close to God. But um, I mean, there's a whole slew of selection of saints and angels that we can choose from as far as the iconography goes. Now, the the painting itself is going to be about the Paschal Mystery. It's about the Holy Spirit and God. Now, the last painting I did sort of showed that God is presenting or giving Jesus Christ to us as a gift. But the Paschal Mystery um, that the priest was telling me about is about God receiving Jesus as a sacrifice. Um, as our sacrifice of the Paschal Lamb to God uh, for the redemption of our sins. And it's, it's kind of like a gift both ways where God gave the Son to us we in our sinfulness um, uh, unknowingly almost sacrificed Jesus back. Um, you know, the sinners of the world killed Jesus, but those of us who believed um, offer Jesus as a sacrifice and atonement for our sins. Um, so it's like this sort of mutual gift that Jesus is kind of caught in the crossfire of, of holiness and sin. Um, and it's definitely something I'll be reflecting on a lot because it's not something I've really thought about extensively. Um, now a couple of things, uh, so I've only drawn Mary and Joseph and then the Holy Spirit and God. I'm going to draw God in more of a kingly robe, like maybe with a crown. The last God that I drew, God the Father, had, was more of that Michelangelo God where he just had the, the full head of white hair. But this one, I'll, maybe I'll have God as king. Now drawing, you know, any depiction of God, um, you know, is, is kind of difficult because God is not a creature in the world. Um, God is being itself. But um, so I hope that it can help worship if we have a depiction of God. And there have been many depictions of God in the past, uh, artist renditions. So I'm, I'm hoping mine, uh, you know, can be something good. Now, God is obviously very much larger than life here. So every other figure will be smaller than him. Um, this Jesus is, uh, you know, a bit larger than life as well. So maybe with any other uh, saint that might be, you know, a human saint, I might make them a little bit, uh, you know, maybe life size or smaller. Um, so that when, you know people that may be a little bit larger than life but you know I'm, I'm just going to compare mary and joseph here to the body of jesus that they may they may they might be um from the perspective of the parishioners maybe around his height and they might have to come close and see the painting to sort of uh, tell what's going on there but you can definitely tell that's mary and joseph um there's a there's a statue of saint joseph here i'm not sure if we want to draw double up on the joseph but i guess i don't see a problem with it and right here I have Angel Gabriel, who is um, going to be close to Mary and Joseph. And, you know, his his great feat in, in the Bible um, was the Annunciation, you know, coming to Mary and uh, telling her that she would conceive um, of the Holy Spirit, uh, their son Jesus. Now, I don't know if the name, the person who came to Joseph in his dreams was named, I mean, the angel. We don't know. I don't know if it's Angel Gabriel. I don't remember. Or if it's just some, you know, random angel of the Lord. Not random, <laughs> but unnamed. Um, now I want to draw Michael, but since we're drawing um, uh, Gabriel a little bit higher up, um, I, I want to draw the angels like looking at God, and I want to draw you know the the saints maybe looking at Jesus because I think that I think that would make some sense, you know. Um, and I have a, a a pose for Michael so far when he was down there, but I I, I think I'm going to change his pose. I want something definitely um, majestic and something powerful for Michael. Um, to show that he is a warrior, 
you know, the rival and, and defeater of Satan, conqueror of Satan. So I want him maybe higher up here and maybe um, definitely looking at God. Um, but some, something, something majestic. So uh, maybe we would definitely want his weapon so that he's ready to fight for God. Um, so what would be what would be a nice pose? And when I draw Michael, I definitely want him to be like tall and strong and muscular. Um, I had him like on his two feet, but since he's an angel, maybe we can have him sort of flying here. I'm trying to think of a good depiction. Um, sort of like uh, his name means who is like God. I forgot what I forgot what the name Gabriel means. Um, Gabriel, I forgot what the name Raphael means. So maybe I'll look into their name meanings that, that might, uh, help educate, um, you know, how I pose them. So I know Michael is, who is like God? So maybe he can have, have his hand up asking the question, who is like God? Obviously his, his uh, his question is a rhetorical, um, not sarcastic, but like rhetorical because obviously the answer is no one, um. But that's the question he poses to us by his name. Um, and that's why he is the rival of, of, of Satan, right? Because Satan wanted to be godlike. Um, he wanted to take, um, you know, creation into his own hands and uh, manipulate it in his own way. But he, Satan being a, a creature, a finite creature, um, whereas uh, God is um, infinite being itself, um, could never uh, match God. So... Um, yeah, I guess we'll just, for now, we'll just kind of work on these poses with the, with the ones that we have. Maybe we can lift up his chest a little bit. This is still the sketch phase, and, um, I don't know if Michelangelo had the luxury of, like, digital art, but I do. So we can try to make something really great. Uh, Michelangelo, I'm sure he sketched it out, right? I, I mean, apparently the Sistine Chapel took four years, and after having done a mural, four years seems really fast. It's like, how, there are so many figures, it's so detailed. It's like, how is that even possible? Um, appar apparently that's how long it took, so uh, we'll see how long this one takes me. Obviously I have modern tools, so we will see. Um, we'll downsize him a little bit, I have his head a little bit large here. But this is definitely going to be a long and reflective piece for me. You're going to see me working on this on and off between commissions, maybe. I don't even know if I'll get commissions because this is like the big commission. I mean, the church, the priest said he will pay me. So, um, you know, we're going to get compensated for this. I don't know what how much it will be. We haven't decided on that yet because we haven't decided on like the length of the project. But I'm definitely going to be recording this time and recording how, you know, how long it takes. And um, we're going to take into account paint and resources and, and stuff like that. But we're also going to be documenting the whole thing as much as possible because my friend um, one of my coworkers said he would let me borrow um his uh his gopro and some recording equipment to really document the whole process and it's gonna be it's gonna be quite an experience for sure um i did not think i would be a moral you know a mural painter and of course michelangelo one of the most uh um prolific artists of all time was doing churches and he was in italy and here i am in you know uh, central northern california and um, you know, I suppose carrying on his work, you know, I don't want to boost myself up as some kind of genius artist because I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm just a guy and happen to be asked to do these, uh, works and, um, but I, I take them as a blessing and that God is calling me and asking me to do something for him. Um, so I, I want to take this work very seriously. Okay. So I think my, um, pencil brush is too big. It's my strokes are getting to a little bit too wide here. I want to get a little bit more precise. Um, maybe we can do some foreshortening. Yeah, maybe more of a little bit of a bicep curl here, right? For Michael. A little bit of bicep right there. And he's often depicted with a sword or spear. I like sword. Um, the sword of Michael. And then, what kind of nice uh, flying dynamic pose can we get? Something foreshortened here as well. 
he can be flying sort of um, up towards God. He's a little bit too big still. And wherever I place him, his hand's going to be sort of facing up towards God. So we got Gabriel and Michael. Okay, so here we get some wings. There's so much church history with iconography, you know, and we're going to bring this to Northern California. Like, it, it already looks, like, crazy, you know? Like, the vision for this, especially if we're going to do the three walls, I mean, the two walls on the side. That's why I have this picture set up this way. Um, yeah. Let's try, I'm trying to find some, figure out something dynamic for, like, the shape of his his hips and his legs. Chest here. Let's work our way down from his torso. Get something really nice and dynamic. Rib cage here, strong. And then we're gonna arch the back or keep it stable and straight. Get some rhythm down to his, his pelvis here. Maybe not so much of arch back, but like something straight. But twisted a little bit, maybe. And then... Okay, maybe something like this. And then sword. Angle of the sword might be kind of crucial here. Because he's not attacking God. He's fighting for God. So maybe he can be pulling the sword back, facing away. Yeah, the sword would be facing away. Like he's, like he's uh, protecting God, rather, right? Not that God needs protection, but protecting the kingdom of God, perhaps. So I think that's good. I think this is kind of a nice pose. Some nice eagle wings here. Something like this. And we'll mirror also, you know. Just to see the angles and make sure everything looks good. We'll do this periodically. So we'll get a sword here. Here we have the sword coming, angling that way. Now if it goes across the wall, it's going to be really weird. It's going to make the sword look bent. So I, I'm, I'm afraid of that happening, that I don't get the perspective quite right. So I, I really want to make sure the sword, like, looks good. So I might angle it down a bit. I mean, that angle looks nice, though. Try to find a good angle for the sword here. Because he's not attacking God, and we don't want it to look like that. Okay. 
okay, we'll work with that for now. So we got Michael there. Um, John the Baptist. So in in a lot of old iconography, um, and the in the one that I think I have a reference here. Um, I think it was Albrecht Durer. Yeah, it was this one here. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this one, study it a little bit. So oh, there was another one too that I saw that my friend sent me. Um that had Mary and John the Baptist. But this one here has Mary. And I believe this one here is John the Baptist. You can see he has that crazy beard and that crazy uh, f uh, furry, like fuzzy uh, um, garment. Because I saw green and, you know, I thought, okay, maybe it, that's Joseph. But I don't think in this these early times that there was a lot of, there was a whole lot of uh, um, honor to St. Joseph in those times. So um, I think that's John the Baptist. So we're going to do John the Baptist parallel to Mary, like a, like a lot of um, older iconography has. Um, he really is a great saint. Now these one, these people down here, I think were alive at the time that this painting was made from from my uh, reading of the history of this piece. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Albrecht Durer. Um, and then there's a whole host of angels. I think some of these here, you know, might be the archangels here. Um, that one has like a, a piece of meat or something on his, on his spear. Um, maybe these are the archangels, I don't know. Um, you know, they all have different uh, colors and stuff. So, you know, I would have to, you know, do some research and study on this piece. But I guess it's not that important. Um, here, it's all women. Perhaps, um, you know, the, the early virgin saints. Uh, there are a lot of early virgin martyrs um, in those early times. There's Moses, right? So he has the the Ten Commandments there. So, and who's who has the harp here? I don't know. And maybe Elijah's up here too. So, um but yeah, we have God, uh, Jesus on the cross, and then the Holy Spirit up there. And then these weird looking, I believe these are the cherubim, um, you know, with the little baby faces on bird heads. This would honestly look really awkward and creepy if we did it in a modern church. Um, but that's how the cherubim are described uh, in those days. So um, I'm going to try, I'm just going to draw archangels. I know that cherubim are higher ranked from my understanding than, uh, than archangels. Um, so maybe I could do some cherubim up, cherubim up here, but um, I would probably draw baby, you know, baby heads in a different way. Um, in the previous church, I did two cher cherubs um, that were little baby angels praising God. Um, but I didn't draw the cherubim in such a kind of a weird looking way. Um, not that the angels described in the Bible aren't weird. I mean, the seraphim uh, definitely have very weird... Uh, um, images, and I'm not even going to attempt drawing a seraphim. Uh, I feel like it would just be way too much for me. Um, all right, so we have that. So we'll 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 go ahead and do John the Baptist up here. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna look up some John the Baptist iconography, maybe on my phone right now. Um, I know he's usually depicted with the crazy clothes and maybe some kind of cross. Um. Yeah, like a, a long reed cross. Yeah, with the crazy clothes. Let's see here. Yeah, it's like a, a long cross. I don't know what it's made of, like sticks or something. But he had the disheveled beard, disheveled beard, disheveled hair. Um, yeah, and he was eating locusts out in the wilderness. So yeah, a long cross. I wonder, I have to, I have to look up why... Um, why he has that long cross and what and what it's made of. So let's let's take some notes because if we're gonna do you know good depictions, we want um, so all right. Why the long cross? But let's start drawing him. We'll we'll get John the Baptist right here. I feel like with Michael, we can get him higher up, you know? We can get him higher up. I just don't want it to look like he's attacking God. But maybe maybe this angle, we can get the sword angle, like... Coming down... That way. John the Baptist... 
Bring it a little bit further away here. My pencil's still too big. I want to feel as if I'm drawing on the wall right now. So we'll get a nice small pencil and a nice eraser. So John the Baptist venerating, preparing the way for Jesus. So it's almost as if, you know, his ministry, he was declaring to us. So I, maybe an inviting hand. Foreshortened also. a little bit too large again. I think we got to zoom in pretty pretty well here. I want I definitely want him to be like really upright. Declaring prepare the way of the Lord. The one who was Isaiah prophesied, right? Is that what was is that what he was? And then Jesus said something like John the Baptist was the new Elijah or something like that. I'm going to keep reading, listening to the Gospels and over and over to try to get this, you know, to really think about this. Um, okay, pose here. I really want them to be like leaning toward Jesus, right? Maybe a little bit hunched over since he was the wilderness guy. Maybe arch his back a little bit. still with the inviting hand and still a, we still want a balanced pose start over with the lower half here I'm, I don't know how I feel about them looking down at Jesus, but that's all the, the wall allows. Like the, the wall is higher up, so they're going to be like all kind of higher up, but looking down at, at Jesus. We want them to all be worshiping, right? That's that's the act happening here. Worshiping in awe of the mystery. I think with that said, we can have Joseph's hand a little bit higher up here. I want to get this color it's a little bit darker than what we have up here yeah yeah a little bit darker okay I can bring his head down a little bit more I want a little bit of exaggeration in his pose like like wow like like really like he's tilting his head forward Yeah, something like that. Okay. Let's continue with John now. With the inviting hand. I 
I want something stable, something strong. But something wild. He was the wild man. We can even crouch his pose a little bit, maybe. Bend his knees a little bit. Maybe bend his knees. He, I think he would do that, right? Would he? Would John do that? Kneel before Jesus. No, let's let's keep him standing though. He have a nice S curve in his leg. Where would his other arm be? The long cross here. Get him a little bit smaller. A little bit higher up. We want a ground plane where Mary is, so let's actually do that. Let's uh, get a nice little ground plane. And we want perspective. Now, if we're going to have perspective with a horizon, the horizon should be down below. So the horizon line is probably going to be here. So I'm actually going to draw a line right here, through here, through the tabernacle and above the altar because that's where I did it for the other church and it only makes sense. I want I want these mural paintings to be drawn from the perspective of someone about to receive the Eucharist. That's where I took this original pic this initial picture from, like where would the uh, receiver be looking? Now that said, we're, if we're having a picture that these saints are going to be standing up here, then that means there is going to be some perspective and I think it should go towards the head of Jesus. Like the face of Jesus. So I'm going to make a little bit of a mark right here. Um, and we're going to get some perspective going out there. Right? Towards us. Um, I guess the perspective line doesn't really matter that much. But if we're going to create a ground floor for the saints, it's going to, the land is going to come out this way. Okay. Um, and for us, there's going to be a you know a little bit more perspective coming down this way, like that. So we we got a little bit of perspective here. And then we're going to have clouds and mountains, maybe kind of, maybe kind of an arc. I want I, I kind of want to show deep perspective I saw I recently saw a painting video where he talks about deep perspective and I think it really comes down to um, this the uh, not atmospheric perspective but the, but the size of things that you draw in the distance so if we if we draw really tiny things in the back like maybe we can make the clouds really tiny you know if we make the clouds really tiny coming back here it will show the this the scope and scale of this piece so we're just gonna I'm just gonna put some placeholder clouds back here. And I want light emitting from here. Yeah. I don't know how long I have to um, work on this, but we're gonna take all the time we need, right? We're making a we're trying to make a beautiful uh, painting here. And it's just I mean it hasn't really dawned on me yet, but I'm gonna be standing up there with a scaffold. you know, gotta stay safe you know, painting this thing. And I've never painted, you know, this many figures. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy that this is that I'm going to be doing this to me, you know, but we're going to try to bring uh, beauty into uh, this church, this parish here. And we're going to, we're, we're going to try to level up our skills from the last mural. 
because I'm, I'm good at drawing, but painting, uh, my painting ability needs a lot of work. So I'm, I'm definitely going to use this draft and um, try to paint well. So we have John, Mary, and Joseph as saints. Now Moses and Elijah, we can have a, maybe a little higher up. Um, I don't know how many figures I want on this. You know, and how many can really fit here, right? So like we can have a whole crowd right here. So I can just do kind of placeholder people. We can, you know, we can do Peter, James, and John. We can do Peter and, a yeah, Peter and Andrew, James and John. We can do the whole apostles. We could do, there's so many choices here. But, you know, we can really have a, a multitude of people. Again, with, with deep perspective, right? So deep perspective would be, they would be coming sort of back this way. And then if we want the saints, we can have many depictions of saints like worshiping up here. And we have we can have a lot of choices on, on who we're going to depict. So and here we can also have like more scenery just coming spreading out this way. If people when people get close to the altar, they will see. So this perspective that I took a picture from is also from from that same perspective. So um, the painting will sort of spread out this way. And again, all lines kind of um, moving toward God the Father here. And again, it's going to be weird, weird perspective because there's three walls. So we have some converging lines toward Jesus and converging lines toward God, the Father. I'm just kind of placing those lines for now. Okay. So we can have some clouds mountains, wilderness, you know, land and trees, and we want to make it beautiful. I definitely think that with Gabriel, Joseph, and Mary, we can have some kind of lilies growing to show that, the, you know, their purity. Just as background scenery. And then we, yeah, I guess we want the multitude, right? So if we, if we do have angels back here, I don't know. It, this is such a crazy idea if we have angels back here. Silhouettes. We can. I mean, we could do silhouettes. You can tell what's going on if we do silhouettes. Right? All the angels praising God and praising Jesus and praising the Holy Spirit. Like looking in all three directions, but all looking at God. That's, a, that's an idea. But it might be a little bit too ambitious. I don't want to get too ambitious. Or do I? This is for the church, you know? Do we want to get crazy ambitious? If there's ever a time to get crazy ambitious, it's now. With any artwork, I don't want to skimp on uh, on something that praises God. Okay, so there's John the Baptist. I mean, we can do Peter. Maybe not Peter and Andrew, but Peter and Paul. I need to read Acts of the Apostles, actually. I should listen to that. I'm, I'm listening to the Gospels, starting with the first one, starting with the Gospel of Matthew. Um... But maybe once we get to the Acts of Apostles, I'll have a little bit more familiarity with this. And maybe even as I'm painting, um, it could be something that I reflect on. Now, I took many hours to do that first painting at, at the other parish. So, I mean, this is it. This is our, our new project. Yeah, we're just going to do a, sort of a multitude. I mean, I can think of many saints. Uh, Maximilian Kolbe, St. Teresa of Lisieux. There's so many we can do. And I think maybe as we get closer to us, we can get closer to modernity. Like we can do St. Bernadette, St. Maximilian Kolbe, like 19th and 18th century saints, 20th century saints. Yeah, that could be that could be a good idea. Like as we get closer to the to to God, the ancient one, we can have older saints. We can have Old Testament figures. We could have angels. Um... And then spreading out, so I'll write this as a note. Closer to God equals ancient. Closer to congregation equals modern. So we can have the, the, like, the passing of time. Because God is the God of, you know, space and time, the Lord of creation, the Lord of existence. So we can represent the passing of time that here we are in 2024 looking at 
this, the one who is, the was and is and is to come, in the beginning was the word. Like when we look forward, we're looking at Genesis 1, we're looking at John 1, we're looking at, at in the beginning. But then as we get closer to us, we can, we can share the stories of the saints even just by depicting them. Because that's what's powerful in, in a name, in the name of a saint. Um... That just by saying one name, you have a, a, a crazy, beautiful, powerful story. Um, Heart-wrenching, real, bloody stories. Um, so once we get out here, we can really, uh, you know, have a lot of liberty to, uh, as the people we want to depict. But I will let the priest, um, d you know, decide. Um, and I'll take some notes here. Because we, 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 we want to have the multitude, right? We're feeding the multitude. But we don't we still we still don't want to overcrowd with figures, right? I mean, or do we? Because there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on. And again, each of these faces might have a story. Like, look at all these little random people in the back. There's men and women on this side, actually. But on the other side is the, the Holy Virgins. All right, look at those um, palm leaves. I think palm is a palm martyrdom. I don't I don't I don't remember. And then we have the living people here. I think this was like a pope and the king or something like that. The armored guy right there. He has a cool face. I like his face there. Albrecht Durer. I'm not a Renaissance artist by any means. I am have come from a background of anime. So maybe the new Renaissance will be those of us who came from uh, the, the digital art um anime uh, animation Disney background. So I think I'm going to take a bit of a break. I have added quite a bit of thought and detail to this one, but I think I'm going to sit on this for a little bit, reflect on it and pray about it. And we'll keep going here. So let's zoom in. This is what we got so far. This is what you'll see when you go into the church. At least my initial sketch. We have Gabriel, Joseph, Mary, John, Michael, God, the Holy Spirit, the multitude, the clouds, and some cherubim, uh, far away and some tiny clouds up at the top. So that's what we got so far. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for listening. God bless. Bye-bye